Let us start with a prayer. From the Bhagavata, Bhagavatam is one of the 18 major Puranas. Of the 18, this is the most important, prominent Purana, Bhagavata Puranam. Is on page 104 104 of the book Universal Prayers, the first one on that page. Oh, Yam Brahma Varunen Darudra Marutas Tunmanti Divyaistavai Vedai Sangaparak. Padakramo upon Shadir Gayan Tiyam Samaga Jana was chitatadduate in a manasa Pashantiyam Yogino Yasam tam namidusra suragana gave a yet a smainama Om Shanti 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 Loving salutations to that effulgent being. Whom Brahma and other gods praise with the divine hymns, whom the singers of the Sama glorify by the Vedas and their auxiliaries, repeating the words in a particular order along with the Upanishads, whom the yogins realize through deep meditation with their minds wholly absorbed in him, and those and whose extent neither the gods nor the demons can know. Salutations to the Lord. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Om peace. May there be peace in our hearts. May there be peace and harmony amongst all beings. And may there be peace everywhere in nature. So let us continue with our study of the 11th chapter, Vishwarupa Darshana Yoga. The Lord Bhagavan Sri Krishna has a very special grace to Arjuna revealed is cosmic form. Cosmic form or Vishwarupa means Vishwa means all cosmos, whatever is there in creation. All that is in the Lord is contained within Him. Earlier we saw that the Lord had said by a fraction of his infinite power, he sustains the whole universe. Vishtabhya hamidam krishnam ekam shena sthito jagat. Ekam shena is one fraction. Idam krishnam jagat, this whole universe, vishtabhya encompassing pervading with a small fraction of its power. Aham I am, I abide, I exist. So that, that cosmic form in which everything can be seen all at once, whatever is happening everywhere, anywhere in the universe, in the cosmos, and, and the past and present and future also can be seen. You can't even imagine how that will be. Ordinarily, we can only see a small part with our eyes. Just uh, the peripheral eyes, if they're good, we can see a little bit more, otherwise, little bit less. But to see the whole universe at once, we can't even visualize how it will look. We see a small fraction of the universe. So that is the experience that Arjuna uh, was uh, having when this cosmic form was revealed to him. And in this segment of 11 chapter, Arjuna is describing as much as can be described in words. 
what he was seeing in the cosmic form. So we will begin with uh, where we left last time. Uh, verse number 17. Verse number 16 we read last time where Arjuna said verse number 16 Aneka Bahudara Vakra Netram Pashyami Twam Sarvato Ananta Rupam Twam Pashyami I am saying you Arjuna is telling Sri Krishna when he was seeing the cosmic form what was he saying there? Aneka Bahudara Vakra Netram Aneka means many many not one Baho means arms. Udara means stomachs. Vaktram means face. Netra means eyes. When we see somebody, we see one person. One pair of eyes and one face and two hands. That we are familiar with that one. If you see a person with innumerable faces and hands and feet and bodies, how can we bear that uh, sight? Very difficult. That's why Sri Krishna granted special eyes to Arjuna to be able to see that whole cosmic form. Then he says in verse 16, Na antam na madhyam na punaha tava adim There is no end Anta means end of this form everywhere. Wherever you turn in 360 degrees above, below, right, left, you see the same cosmic form. One cosmic form, all universe. No antam, no end, no madhyam, no beginning, no punaha tava adim. No, no beginning, madhyam means no middle. Where does it begin? Where does it end? All the objects we see have a beginning and an end. If you see a building, we see this is where it begins, this is where it ends, this is the middle, this is the height. That you can see, it's a limited form. But how to uh, experience, describe a, an object which is everywhere present? Everywhere. There is no middle, there is no beginning, there is no end. Such a cosmic form. Pashyami, Arjuna is saying to Krishna, I am saying. Now we go to verse number 17. Kiritinam gadinam chakkinam cha tejo rashim sarvato dhikti bantam pashyami tvam durmiriksham samantat jipta nularkad dhimaprameyam <coughs> Here also he says Pashyami. The word Pashyami comes in the third line of this verse number 17. Arjuna is saying, I am seeing. Pashyami means I am seeing. He's trying to describe as much as can be described the cosmic form. So he said, Kiritinam. Kirita means a crown that kings wear. Royal term, Kiritinam. So, this cosmic form, Bhagavan Sri Krishna had a uh, Kirita from Gadinam. Gada means a maze. Bhima is famous for his uh, Gada. With this Gada, he can <laughs> do anything. So, Bhagavan is Vishnu, uh, holding Gada. Vishnu also is holding Gada. Shanka, Chakra, Gada, Padma. In four hands, Vishnu is holding a shankha, a conch, chakra, a sudarshana chakra. Gada means a maze and Padma means a lotus. So here this cosmic form is also holding a maze, Gadinam. Chakrinam is holding a chakra, like sudarshana chakra. Tejo Rashim. Rashim means mass, huge quantity of stages of splendor, a mass of splendor. How 
bright desert splendor was described uh, earlier or uh, it will come uh, it will come later divi surya sahasrasya bhaved yugapad uthita eriba sadrshi sasyat bhasastasya mahatmana that description of the splendor as if 1000 suns had arisen in sky at once yugapad means at once simultaneously if one sun rises in the sun which happens every morning we cannot look at it it's dangerous to look at the sun so bright it is if thousand suns are in the sun at the same time can we imagine the brightness impossible to visualize that is why he is called tejorashi mass of brightness splendor sarvato deeptimantam sarvata means in all directions deeptiman means one who is blazing with effulgence in all directions pashya mitvam i am saying you durniriksham durniriksham means difficult to see that form is frightening to see so many things happening so many hands so many faces all around in every direction spreading with no beginning no end no middle how to we can visualize if we see that actually we won't be able to bear that sight we are seeing for example many of you are watching from home so you are sitting in a room and whatever is there in that room you are familiar with that you can bear it limited uh, view but if you can see the whole house at once all the rooms at once it'll be a little bit more confusing and if you see all the houses in the street and everything at the same time whole city if you can see at the same time more difficult like that if you see the whole universe whole universe hmm? vishwa in one place at one time with all the things happening everywhere the universe is not quite lot of activities are happening sun is shining rivers are flowing all those living are living beings are living how to see all of that at once so it is called durniriksham difficult to watch samantat from all sides deepta anala arka jyotim dazzling all around with the light of a blazing fire and sun deepta means blazing deepa means light deepta means very bright blazing deepta anala means uh, fire blazing with fire arka means sun with sun arka jyoti means brightness aprameyam immeasurable watching that scene which is so difficult to see is the durmidiksham i am seeing it he says pashyami now we go to the next verse this all description by arjuna of what he was seeing in the cosmic form verse number 18 tamaksharam paramam meditavyam ಅರ್ಜುನ <coughs> 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 aksharam means imperishable akshara means perishan aksharam means imperishable that is brahman if you go back to chapter 8 uh, first verse arjuna asks seven questions in two shlokas first two shlokas seven questions at once kim tad brahma kim adhyatmam kim karma purushottama like this arjuna's question was 
first question was kim tad brahma what is brahma cannot be described in words in the gospel sri ram krishna says what brahman is cannot be described in words because it is infinite something that is finite we can describe its qualities and uh, shape and color and size and what it the activities ever we can describe but if something is infinite imperishable cannot describe it so when arjuna asked in the eighth chapter chintan brahma first question first of seven questions what was sri krishna's reply in third shloka he says aksharam brahma paramam the brahman is parama means supreme aksharam means imperishable everything else other than brahman in this whole universe universe itself is perishable you can think of can you think of anything which does not uh, go out of existence at some time all world will perish then all galaxy will perish yes astronomers and astrophysicists say that galaxies will go and merge into the black hole at tremendous speed in black hole the density is so high that the whole uh, galaxy can become uh, like one cubic foot wide so many billions of miles across so much uh, density is there so it goes up like this and the galaxies also new galaxies form also at the same time so that is how changes are happening but when all the things are perishable brahman is imperishable only thing that does not change or go out of existence eternal infinite this brahman aksharam brahma paramam that was krishna's Sri Krishna's uh, description of Brahman. When Arjuna asked, "What is God?" Now that same thing comes here, and the at the beginning of verse number eighteen, in chapter eleven, uh, Tomaksharam, Arjuna says to Bhagwan Sri Krishna, "You are imperishable." Krishna, as a personality for that is perishable. He was lived for some time, and then he had to. You have the body. The bodies are perishable, but this Vishwarupa cosmic form, which Krishna is revealing to Arjuna, that is imperishable. Brahman, that is Brahman, that is imperishable. So, Maksharam Paramam Vedi Tavyam Paramam means supreme. Vedi Tavyam Veda means knowledge. Vedi Tavya means something that has to be known. you know many things at least we think you know many things i know this i know that whatever subject you have studied but that is nothing very small fraction of the universe of knowledge how much can a person study hmm? how much how much can a person study vedatavyam the only object worth knowing is brahman the lord himself other objects of study that we is of temporary use hmm. this we saw the distinction earlier between paravidya paravidya the only paravidya knowledge that of object that does not change infinite eternal is paravidya knowledge of brahman all other uh, branches of knowledge a paravidya all the uh, subjects we study in schools and colleges university this is apara vidya means it is not supreme it is temporary because of two reasons one is the object of knowledge itself changes from time to time supposing you study uh, the earth geologists they study the earth earth is changing not very rapidly but it is changing over a period of time geological changes happen continents will shift the world we see today the earth we see today was not uh, what it was uh, about um, uh, say um, uh, several millennia ago 10 20 50 000 ago many years ago different um, configuration was there of the land the object itself is changing 
second problem with uh, apara vidya is our knowledge is imperfect and incomplete of what you know we know certain aspects we don't know everything about anything so that is knowledge is incomplete and object is changing and our ability to retain that knowledge is also very temporary no matter how deeply we study any subject our ability to retain that knowledge in our minds is uh, very temporary in old age all memory goes you can't even remember some people have severe dementia in old age they don't even remember the names of their closest relatives they can't recognize recognize their own children or grandchildren so that's the nature of the mind in which which is the instrument for uh, aparavidya but paravidya aksharam of supreme reality brahman is the only thing that is worth knowing vedityam is what is to be known tum asya vishvasya param nidhanam asya vishvasya of this universe vishvam is cosmos or universe asya vishvasya of this universe tum you are param nidhanam supreme support idana means the support based upon which the universe exists all the universe for everything in the universe exists because of the support of god's power the sun shines because of god's power rivers flow because of god's power all animals people the other living beings live because of god's power is the support of everything in the universe all nature function because of god's power in it behind it so he says vishvasya asya vishvasya of this universe tvam param nidhanam he or the supreme support aadharam second line of verse 18 tamavyayashashvat dharma gopta tvam yu arjuna is addressing bhagwan shashvatah shashvat dharma gopta avyayah avyaya means imperishable Avyaya means expenditure. Avyaya means cannot be expended, cannot be ex- uh, spent, imperishable. No matter how much you spend, you feel it is there. Lord is avyaya, imperishable. Does not go uh, diminish or go out of existence at any time. Tamam, tamam, jaya ha. Shashvata dharma gopta. Shashvata means eternal. dharma shashvat dharma eternal dharma shashvat dharma gopta gopta means means protecting guardian you are the guardian of eternal right righteousness eternal dharma dharma has uh, two aspects all dharma is not eternal certain dharma is uh, good only for a certain period of time but certain dharma is permanent and all unalterable all cannot alter does not change he is the protector of the shashvata dharma permanent dharma what is the difference between shashvata dharma and uh, uh, ordinary dharma some things change rules rules of conduct change what is good rule of conduct at one time Five, six hundred years later, on this different part of the world, the different dharma persists. That is uh, temporary and localized to certain area at a certain during time period of time. Dharma is good. Changes with time and place. That is not shashvata. Shashvata dharma means universal, eternal dharma that does not change, valid everywhere. The Upanishads. described shastra dharma the puranas contain and the smriti smriti scriptures contain temporary samanya dharma which can change from time to time upanishad says this brahman is satyam jnanam anantam brahma that never changes brahman is satyam always existing jnanam consciousness anantam infinite that does not change at all shashvata dharma the lord is the custodian or guardian of shashvata dharma tamo vyaya shashvata dharma gopta 
Sanatanastvam. Sanatana means ancient or eternal, always existing. Everything is temporary, as we saw before. Only permanent thing that always exists is Brahman, the universe, uh, the supreme reality, Brahman. Sanatanastvam purusho matome. Sanatana purusho, I deem you to be the everlasting being. So description, Arjuna's description. Then we go to verse number 19. <coughs> Anadi madhyam tamananta viriyam ananta bahum shashi surya netram pashyamitvam dipta utasha vaktram swateja sa vishwamidam tapantam pashyami Arjuna is saying, I am saying in the cosmic form. The cosmic form is anadi madhyam antam. Adi means beginning, Madhya means middle, Anta means end. Anadi means A means opposite. Without beginning, without middle, without end. You saw that before. Ordinary forms have a beginning, middle and end. If you take a person or a house or a building or even the Himalayas, at some point it begins and at some point it ends. That is the middle. But the Lord is infinite. Where is the beginning? Where is the end for this cosmos? Where is the middle? So he is without beginning, middle and end. Anadi madhyantam anantaviryam Endowed with inexhaustible energy, power. Every entity has a limited power. Some people have more power, they can lift uh, the... Uh, this uh, weight lifters, some of them can lift a thousand pounds. Some of them can lift uh, 780 uh, pounds. But ordinary person can lift maybe 70, 80 pounds. So that varies. The Lord is in, has infinite power. There is no limit to his power. Ananta Viryam. He supports the whole universe. He creates it, he maintains it, and he withdraws it. That much power he has of this whole universe. And this universe is only a small, it's only a small fraction of his infinite power. Ananta Bahum, infinite number of arms. Bahum means arm. Shashi Surya Netram. Netram means eyes. His eyes are. One eye is Shashi, the moon, the other eye is Surya, the sun. It's a description of Arjuna, what Arjuna was. Pashyamitvam Deepta Huta Shavakram. Deepta Huta Shavakram uh, means uh, the blazing fire for face. Vakram means face. Hutasha means fire. Deepta means glowing. His face is like glowing fire. Deepta Hutasha Vatram. Swatejasa idam vishvam tapantam. By his own power, Swatejasa idam vishvam, this whole universe, tapantam. He is scorching or burning. That means he is sustaining it, he, he can be destroying it also, withdraws it also. All by his power, infinite power, God is Ananta Shakti Man. God is Ananta Shakti Man. The infinite power he has. Then we go to verse number 20. Java Pratevyo Ridavantaram Hi Vyabdam Tvayake Navidishascha Sarva Dishtvad bhutam rupamidam tabogram lokadrayam pravyatitam mahatman java prithiviyo idam antaram. Jav means the heavens, prithivi means the earth, 
Antaram means the in, inter space between heaven and earth. All the three, earth, inter space, and heavens. Many heavens, not one. Java, Prithiroidaram, Antaram, indeed, the space between the firmament and the earth has been provided solely by you. That space has been Dvaya Ekena Vyaptam. Vyaptam is pervaded. The Lord has pervaded the whole universe, the earth, in the space above and the heavens above. He pervades everything. Dvaya Ekena by you alone. Sarva Dishascham. All the uh, directions, this, this means direction, north, east, south, west, etc. All the directions, eh, that is everywhere, the whole space, not only is earth, all, all universe, all the creation is pervaded by the Lord. Sarva Vyapin, we call God Sarva Vyapin. Vyapin means one who pervades, Vyapta. And this Vyaptam. You see the word Vyaptam in the middle, pervaded. Idam Rupam Adbutam Ugram Drishtva, second line, verse 20. This form, Idam Rupam, this cosmic form which Bhagavad is revealing to Arjuna, this cosmic form, Ugram, it is terrifying. Because everything is happening at the same time, people are dying. He described that later. Everybody that was in the battlefield, Kurukshetra battle, they're all going to die, and that scene of dying is also being shown in they are entering into the tremendous mouth of this cosmic form. That means they are dying. That's being shown. To watch all of that happening in the future, what happened in the past is terrifying vision. Ugram, Tava Idam. Ugram Adbhutam Rupam. Adbhutam is wonderful cosmic form. No? Lokatrayam Pragvyatitam Mahatman. This whole uh, universe, the three worlds. The three worlds means earth and Antariksha and the world, worlds above. That means whole creation is Pragvyatitam is overwhelmed. It's impossible to bear that sight of cosmic form. Then you go to verse number uh, 21. Ami hitvam ami hitvam surasangha vishanti ke chidbheta prangalayo grananti <coughs> Swasti Chitva Maharshi Chitva Sangha Stuvantitvam Stutevi Pushkalabhi Ami means this, plural, this, pronoun. Asav Amu Ami. Asav means this one person. Ami means all these people here. Ami Sura Sangha. Sangha means congregation, group of Sura, Sura means all the gods. All this congregation group of gods, Tvam Vishanti. Tvam means you, Vishanti means enter. Ami Tvam Surasangha Vishanti. All these groups of gods enter in or entering into the cosmic form. Entering into cosmic form means merging in the cosmic form. End of their existence. Kechid Bhita Pranjala Yogrananti. Some of the gods, Kechid means some of them, Bhita, they are terrified by the cosmic form. Grananti, they are praising your glories. How? Pranjala Yaha. Anjali means folding a hand like this. In expressing devotion, when you see somebody, you say Namaskar, Namaste, like this we do. Expressing devotion. Some of these gods, Pranjalayaha, folding their hands in devotion, Gita, out of them, terrified by this cosmic form, 
Brananti, they glory for their uh, extol your glories. Swasti Chukta Maharshi Suddha Sangha Suvanti Tvam Sudhibi Ishpalabhi Maharshi Siddha Sangha Sangha means group, congregation. Group of Maharshis, great sages. Rishi, Maharshi, Devarshi, Brahmarshi, like the different stages of uh, sages are there. Maharshi is great sages. Maharshi Siddha. Siddhas are uh, perfected beings. As you saw before, there are many different kinds of beings in this universe. We are only seeing any human beings and animals and plants. Those are beings. But besides the beings which you are familiar with, which you can see, there are many other beings above us and below us whom you cannot see. For example, some of them are Gandharva. Above Gandharva means a, a divine being, very worst, well versed in arts, performing gods, music, dance, etc., and studio arts, painting, etc. Those are Gandharvas. And then above Gandharvas, there are Siddhas, perfected beings. How did they become perfect? By virtue of, by dint of spiritual practice. We individuals like us, we are imperfect as we are right now. Many limitations are there with body mind. But sincere, prolonged spiritual practice removes all the blemishes. And you become perfect. The Lord is perfect. Be ye perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. That was the instruction in the Holy Bible. We have to become perfect like Him. Eventually we become one with Him and one with Him. As we are now, our minds are not very pure. Sometimes uh, we have become angry, sometimes jealous, sometimes sad. Those are imperfections. Our bodies are very, very much imperfection. We know from experience. So, Maharshi Siddha Sangha. Siddha means perfect beings. Sangha means groups. These various groups of Maharshis and Siddhas, perfect beings, Swasti Iti Uktva. Swasti means may there be well-being. Swasti, Swasti, we say, and during puja also we say Swasti. May there be well-being, like this. Saying, uh, saying grace, exclaiming, let there be prosperity, iti uktva, saying that, tvam stuvanti, they praise you. Stotra means praising. Stuti, stuti means praising. Stotram, stuvanti. How do they praise you? How? Pushkala bihi, stuti bihi. Stuti means a, a hymn or stotra, describing the glory of God, glory of God. And those hymns or stutis are pushkala vihi, rich in content. Pushkala means sumptuous, rich in content, not ordinary poetry, but divine poetry. The hymns to a God, you can see very beautiful hymns. Uh, for example, Shankaracharya's hymns. They have extraordinary beauty, uh, divine and poetical beauty. Blender they have. Also, some more familiar hymns like the Hanuman Chalisa, one of the most beautiful compositions in Avadi language, composed by Tulsi Das, Saint Tulsi Das. Pushkala, by such hymns, all the Maharshis and Siddhas, they are praising you. So, this Arjuna saying this to Bhagavan Krishna, revealing his cosmic form. Then what else is Arjuna saying is it's like explained in 22 also. Continuation. Rudra Ditya Vasavo Yecha Sadhya Vishveshvina Marutas Toshma Pascha Gandharva Yaksha Surasiddha Sangha Vikshante Tvam Visvitas Taiva Sarve Rudras, earlier also we saw there are many beings above us. Among them are the Rudras, Ekadasha Rudra, 11 aspects of Rudra, a class of beings. Aditya, 
Aditya means twelve glowing, shining beings. One among them is the sun familiar to us. There are twelve of those. Dwanasha Aditya. Vasavaha, Vasusa, other class of being, eight of them are there. Ashta Vasu. These Vasus are above human beings. More power, they are more powerful, more knowledgeable, etc. One of the Vasus we are familiar with. In the Mahabharata story, you hear about Bhishma, the grandfather. He was one of the Vasus. Extraordinary person, so much knowledge and power and everything. Bhishma was, uh, had the uh, gift of leaving the body at will. Whenever he wanted, he could leave the body. He could live as long as he wanted. If he, want, he wanted to go, he could leave the body and go. That was on his control. We don't have that control. We don't decide when we die. When, when that comes, we die. It may come tomorrow, it may come uh, two, three years or for some younger people, it may come 50 years later. But it's not in our control. Vasus have that power. Eight of them are there, Ashta Vasus. Eight is Sadhya. Sadhya means those who are not yet Siddhas. Siddha means perfected being. Those who have become perfect. Some are uh, perfect with their spiritual powers. In this life, they become perfect. Some are eternally perfect. Nitya Siddha. Those Sri Ramakrishna talks about uh, Siddhas in the gospel. Some are Nitya Siddha, ever perfect. Like Swami Vivekananda. He was ever perfect. Even before he was born, he was a great Rishi. And then he, once you have perfect, you can't lose it. Ever perfect. Sadhya means those who are in the process of becoming perfect. Sadhya, Vishwar, Vish. Vishveshvinau. Vishve means all Ashwins. Ashwins means the twins. There are two, two Ashwins are there. They control in the uh, bodies of human beings, they control the breathing process. So Ashwini Devatas, two of them are there. Ashwinau. Marutascha. Marut means another class of being. 49 Maruts are there. There are other beings, Marutascha, Ushmapascha. Ushmapa means Pitaraha, Pitras, the ancient, uh, the departed souls living in the Pitra Loka. After leaving this human uh, Loka, many people go into Pitra Loka, where all the Pitras, Pitras means departed ancestors, parents and grandparents and everybody. They live there, not permanently, for some time. When they stay there and the Pitruloka is exhausted, they take birth in the next birth. They, they assume another body, birth, take birth again. By doing this many times, in every time, every birth, they make some improvement in their spiritual life. Gradually, they will move towards perfection. After many lifetimes, they become perfect and they become one with God. That is liberation or moksha. So those people in the, who live in the Pitra Loka, ancestors. <clears throat> Gandharva, Yaksha, Asura, Siddha, Sangaha. Gandharva means other uh, beings above human beings. There are two kinds of Gandharvas. Manava Gandharva, Manusha Gandharva, Deva Gandharva. Manusha Gandharva means <clears throat> those who, have the, who are human beings before, Manushyas, and they became Gandharvas by doing good deeds. And then Devagandhara means those Gandharvas who became Gandharvas by the grace of God. Devagandhara. They have special powers. You are familiar with uh, <clears throat> one Gandharva in the Ramana story. Who is the Gandharva that comes in the Ramana story? The demon Kabandha. Kamanda story, you know, uh, briefly. Uh, when uh, Rama and Lakshmana were looking for Sita, Sita had been taken away by Ravana. Rama did not know who took her away, where she is, what happened to her. So the two brothers, Rama and Lakshmana, were roaming in the whole forest looking for Sita. Where is Sita? Where is Sita? Rama is crying. When they were roaming in the forest looking for Sita, 
they noticed this uh, very strange, grotesque being with a huge stomach and in the a, a huge um, torso, in the middle there is a stomach and two big arms, long arms, powerful arms, no face, no legs. Such a grotesque being they noticed. Not only that, when they went near that one, the two arms began to close in. If they were a little bit delayed in their reaction, they would have been, the two arms would have put them, both of them into the stomach and that would be the end of the story. But Rama knew, this is uh, this uh, Gandharva, uh, he says to Lakshmana, you see this uh, demon, he is not a demon, he was a Gandharva, a handsome Gandharva, he did something wrong to infuriate Indra, the head of all the gods. Indra became angry for some reason with this Gandharva. And then Indra took his um, Vajravida and big, gave a big blow on the top of this uh, handsome Gandharva. The blow was so hard <laughs> that the whole body collapsed. Telescope only head merged into the uh, torso, legs, everything went inside. Only big stomach was there, and the two arms were there. So Arjuna cursed him. Then this uh, Gandharva, who was so handsome, became this Kabanda Rakshasa. He prays to an Indra, seeks forgiveness. I'm sorry I did a mistake and made you angry. Now please show me the way out of this <laughs> form that I assume, grotesque form I assume. Indra says, wait here in the same forest. After some time, Rama Lakshmana will come. They will release you from this form. You will become Gandharva again as you were before. So he was waiting for Rama Lakshmana. At that time, when Rama Lakshmana saw this Kavanda, they became very alert. If you are not careful, we will be swallowed by this Gandharva into the stomach. Then that's the end of us. So Rama tells Arjuna, you take care of one arm. Two big arms were there of this Kavanda. And Rama took care of one arm. As soon as that was done, the Kabanda was released uh, from his grotesque form. He assumed this earlier handsome Gandharva form. Then Rama blesses him and Gandharva says to Rama Lakshmana, I know you are looking for Sita. Uh, she is not here. Where she is, who took her away, you will get all that information if you go to Shabari. A lady, woman waiting in the in the Matangarishi's ashrama. So he directs him, him to Shabari's ashrama. Then Shabari uh, welcomes them and that story continues. That Kabanda, he was a Gandharva. Gandharvas are handsome beings, gifted with all the, uh, all the uh, gifts of music and dance and painting, etc. Very good in the arts. Gandharva, Yaksha. Yakshas are another class of being. You are familiar with one yaksha. Where have you studied about a one yaksha? In the uh, life biography of Sri Ramakrishna. In the biography of Sri Ramakrishna, uh, in the story, Totapuri comes to teach Advaita Vedanta to Sri Ramakrishna. I am describing this because yaksha comes there in that story. So this Totapuri was not living in inside of the building. Used to live 24 hours under a tree, constantly moving from place to place, to place not staying in any one place for more than three days. You are Parivrajaka, that means a wandering monk. So one night he was uh, staying under a tree in Dakshineshwar. Middle of the night, <clears throat> all of a sudden, the whole tree began to shake. Tremendous noise was there. So, uh, this Tutapuri was not an ordinary person. Nothing would frighten him. He's a Brahmagyani. What can frighten him? Then he looks up on, uh, at the tree. He sees the Yaksha sitting there on the tree under which Tutapuri was sitting. So, Tutapuri says to Yaksha, uh, Hello, come here. You all sit down and meditate with me. You are Brahman. I am also Brahman. Everything is Brahman. This uh, shaking of the tree will not do anything. So, that Yaksha was in charge of that place. Many of the places are controlled by one particular yaksha. Another yaksha story comes in Mahabharata. We will not go into it. Uh, yakshas are certain beings, above human beings. 
they control certain territories in some place. Gandharva Yaksha, Asura, Asura means demons, hmm? demons like Ramana, etc., Hiranyakashipu, etc. Demons, Asura, Siddha Sangha, Siddha is perfected being, Sangha means group. Group of all these different kinds of beings are there. We are only seeing human beings, animals, and plants. Yeah, that's all we can see with our present uh, vision. But what Arjuna was saying, all other kinds of beings also he was seeing. He was seeing Gandharvas, Yakshas, Asuras, all those beings he was seeing in the same place, same time. Vikshanti Tvam Vismitas Taivasarve Yakshas, demons, and perfected souls, Siddhas. Vikshanti, they are looking at you. And they are all amazed. Vismita, Vismita means they are wonderstruck. Looking at this cosmic form. Then you go to verse number uh, 23. Gupam Mahati Bhavatra Netram Mahabaho Bahubahu Rupadam Bahudaram Bodhamstra Karalam Dishtva Loka Kavichitas Tatha Aham Kavichita means were frightened out of their wits. See who are those people? Te Mahat Rupam Dishtva. Dishtva means seeing your great form, cosmic form, which is described as Bahu Vaktra Netram, as having too many, very many faces and eyes, very many faces and eyes. Bahu Vaktra Netram, Mahabaho, with great arms, Bahu Bahu, Bahu Bahu Urupadam. Bahu means many, Bahu means arms, it has come before. Uru means thighs, Padam means legs. Very many ordinary people have only one pair of legs that is enough for us. If somebody has 10 pairs of legs, you can't bear that sight. This Ravana had 10 faces and 20 arms. Only Rama could behold him and take care of him. It will be frightening to see such a being. Bahu Bahu Rupadam with many uh, arms, with many thighs, and with many feet, legs. Bahu Dharam with many stomachs. Bahu Damstra Karalam. Damstra means the teeth. Karalam means the terrifying teeth. Bahu, many of these terrifying teeth that Kasmi farm had. Some of the teeth are protruding like the elephant's tusks. Drishtva, seeing this cosmic form. Loka, all the worlds. All the beings, pravyatita ha, yatha means um, why or fear. Pravyatita means they are frightened. They are overwhelmed by looking at this uh, cosmic form, which has so many arms and faces and legs and hands and everything. <coughs> Tatha aham, pravyatita ha. I am also frightened by looking at this cosmic form. Verse number 24. Continuing Arjuna's description of what you are saying in the cosmic form. 24. Navas prasham deepta mane kavarnam yattananam deepta vishala netram tishtva gitvam pravyakitam taratma dhritim navinda mishanam samam cha vishnu dhritim navinda me vinda me means I am unable to get. Dhriti means uh, dhar, uh, dhairya. Hmm? To remain calm in spite of looking at dangerous. In spite of danger. Hmm? I am unable to remain calm. Dhritim navindami. Shamam navindami. Shamam means peace. Tranquil mind. Tranquility of mind. Hmm? My mind is so agitated by looking at the cosmic form that I cannot remain free from Anxiety and fear. They cannot remain calm. Shamam Navindami. Vishnu, O Lord. 
and that description continues. Navasprisham. Navasprisham means the cosmic form is reaching into the sky. No beginning, no end. Ordinary people have only five, six feet, some a little bit more height, that's manageable. If somebody is standing from below, from earth to sky, how can we bear that sight with so many forms and arms and uh, legs and everything, so many mouths? Navas Prisham Deeptam. Deeptam means blazing. Deepa means light. Deeptam means blazing. Aneka Varnam with very many different kinds of colors. Vyatta Nanam. Anana means face. Vyatta Nanam, face or mouth. Anana means. Vyatta Nanam is open face, not one face, innumerable faces. Bhavakra Netram. Deepta Vishala Netram. Deepta means glowing, blazing. With Vishala means wide, Netra means eyes. Cosmic form is very many pairs of eyes which are large and wide and glowing. Drishtva, Tvam Drishtva, seeing you in this form. Pravetitantaratma, all the, uh, the inner self of all beings is deeply troubled. Antaratma means inner self, mind. Pravetitam means greatly agitated, disturbed, out of uh, fear or terror. Seeing this, Drishtva, Dhritim na vindami, I am unable to remain calm and courageous. Um, shamam na vindami, I am unable to get peace of mind. I cannot remain tranquil when I watch this uh, cosmic form. So this description continues for uh, a few more verses. Then, after Arjuna completes his description, then Bhagwan Sri Krishna responds to Arjuna's praise, Arjuna's description from verse number 32. Until verse number 31, Arjuna's description continues. So we just completed uh, 24. Uh, let us continue next uh, week. And uh, in the remaining few minutes, if you have any questions or comments on this topic or any other earlier Gita topic, you are free to share. Hmm. Well, we read so much about the vibhutis before and I mean when you read the vibhutis you would imagine a very calm, very peaceful person, you know, as God. And why are they showing in a kind of ferocious form? All God cannot be limited to one form. Good and bad, ferocious and calm, all forms belong to him. Different, infinite views. We are only seeing one little part of the whole universe. If the whole universe is presented to us, you can see many terrible things happening in the forests and other places. And even on the other cities and a lot of violence is happening. We are not seeing that, but it is there. Here we are seeing everything good, bad, everywhere, happening everywhere. So that's why it is difficult to bear that sight. That's why Krishna had to give special eyes to Arjuna to even be able to watch that cosmic form. We are only able to see a small, infinitesimal fraction of the universe. Today so in this room we are sitting, what very whatever is in this room, two, three people and chairs and furniture and kitchen, that's all we are seeing. That we can handle. But if you can see the whole silver spring or Maryland, that ones, we can't bear that sight. So many things. So many things are happening, seeing they are not existing quietly. A lot of activities going on everywhere. Good and bad activities are going on everywhere. So if everything is presented to us at once, we can't bear that side. So cosmos includes not only good things, 
bad things and very bad things and very good things in the whole spectrum of creation. Pranam Swamiji. Ah, namaskar. Uh, so Swamiji, how many times uh, did Lord Krishna show his Vishwarupa uh, in, in this whole life? That's what we hear. He showed it to Arjuna alone as a special favor. And some other people saw it too, but they could not grasp. They didn't have the special life that Arjuna was given. So whatever little they could see, that's all. The not real sure. cosmic form, whole cosmic form was seen by Arjuna alone because he was given the special eyes which, was, uh, which had the power to see everything at once. Oh, not Yashodama in his in, uh, in his mouth. Yeah, that uh, the another incident when the, the Krishna was a young child, he uh, Yashoda was uh, uh, asking him, "Why did you eat mud and everything in your?" And the Krishna opens his mouth, and there he uh, Yashoda sees the whole cosmos, everything happening, a special grace. So, Swamiji, mother. what about Sanjay? Sanjay had the special grace to be able to describe all of this. He had to see. A few other people saw, but uh, what Arjuna saw uh, was very special. Everything he saw, because he had he was given the special eyes by Bhagwan to see everything. What was the Duryodhana when he was tying Krishna? As a huh? Say it again. Duryodhana when he was tying Krishna as a dude. He saw something, right? But Duryodhana? Duryodhana, he was trying to tie Krishna, right? When Krishna came. Oh, yeah, he saw everybody in the court as Krishna. Yeah. But then... Krishna went to Duryodhana's court, Duryodhana was the king, to negotiate on behalf of uh, Pandavas, not to engage in war. But Duryodhana wanted to punish Krishna, so he asked his attendants to tie this uh, Krishna. Krishna when they went to try, everybody in the hall was looking like Krishna. Who is the real Krishna? He will the real Krishna stand up. So that was uh, his uh, glory, Maya. He can do all those things. Like everybody can appear as Krishna. That's what he made it happen. So to confuse. So Duryodhana could not try anyone Krishna. Um, Swamiji, uh, is this a kind of Savikalpa Samadhi? I don't know. I don't think so. Oh. That cannot be Samadhi. The names and forms are being seen. In Samadhi, you don't see name and form. So, uh, Swamiji Sanjay also must be a very evolved soul to be able to see, it, see yeah. him. Because his function was, Sanjay's role in Mahabharata was to narrate this whole story to, uh, to Dhritarashtra. Because Dhritarashtra was an old king, he was uh, uh, sitting in his palace on the throne, he could not see everything. So it was Sanjaya's role to narrate everything to Dhritarashtra. So whole conversation, Gita is conversation between Sanjaya and Dhritarashtra. So Dhritarashtra asks him in the first sloka, Dharma Kshetre, Kurukshetre, Samaveta, Yurutsavaha, like this. In the Kurukshetra, when, when all the two armies are assembled for war, what happened? That was Dhritarashtra's question. So, in response, uh, Sanjay described the whole event, war and everything. Thank you, Swamiji. The story, somebody has to narrate. Pranam Shamiji. Huh, to somebody. Good. Anything else? Or this so, Swamiji, uh, Pranam. Uh, uh -huh. Here it is, the Arjun is telling Pashrami all the uh, shlokas. So basically mm -hmm. what Arjun is telling to Sri Krishna, Sanjay mm -hmm. is narrating that. Sanjay mm -hmm. may not be seeing the actual okay. things. Yeah, he is narrating what happened to the Trashtra. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So Arjun is telling like Pashrami, like, I am seeing this, I am seeing this. Mm -hmm. Sanjay yeah. is just narrating that. Hmm. No, but many times Sanjay adds his comments as he was a righteous man. He did, he and the Trashtra used to get angry sometimes. You know? See, these are 
story details. Mahabharata story is so complicated. If you pursue any story, it will be a very difficult to confusing to understand. Some very good things happen, very bad things happen, good people are there, very bad people are there. It's a huge forest of many, many, many events and stories. So that is not our purpose. Mm-hmm. Our purpose is to understand the teachings of Bhagavan Sri Krishna. So same thing in the Puranas. Puranas contain fantastic stories. In the Puranic stories, people can fly in the air, birds and animals can talk with human beings. So if you pursue them, uh, how can all this happen? That, uh, that's not the uh, purpose. Purpose is to uh, just absorb the essence of the teachings behind the stories. So don't we don't have to go into every detail of story. How can this happen? How can that happen? That won't, won't lead us anywhere. Let us absorb the essence of Sri Krishna's teachings and put into practice so we can become perfect and achieve liberation. That is the purpose of Gita, Gita study. Right. Same thing in the Ramayana story. So many fantastic things happen. But if you, that's the story part. But behind those, story, those stories, the message is there, Vedantic message. So we grasp the Vedantic message and the story we enjoy. But uh, if you go on discussing why the, how this could happen, how he could do that, then they will get, will get lost in the forest of stories. No, that's not necessary. Thank you, Swamiji. Mm, very good. So God willing, we shall meet next week. Let us say the closing prayer. Om Sarve Bhavanta Sukhina Sarve Santo Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Magasid Dukkha Bhag Bhavet Om Shanti 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 Om May all be happy. May all be free from diseases and other problems. May all know and actually practice what is noble and auspicious. May no one be subject to misery. Om peace. May there be peace and joy in our hearts. Adhyatmika Shanti. May there be peace and harmony amongst all beings. Adi Bhautika Shanti. And may there be peace everywhere in nature. Adi Daivika Shanti. Adi Om Tat Sat. Sarvam Sri Ram Krishna Arpanamastu. All of you stay well. And God willing, we shall continue our study next week. Very nice. 